Brother Habib is reminding me that, uh, inshallah, tomorrow Aisha will be 10-10. 1-0-1-0. Ten, ten. Uh, first of all, I encourage all of you, inshallah, to partake in the uh, honorable cause of Masjid al-Abideen, one of the dynamic masajid, not only in the metropolitan area, but in the nation. Uh, I've gone there a few times, and uh, uh, mashallah, and, uh, the brothers there are so lively and hospitable. So please help them out. Uh, inshallah, we'll be listening to two surahs of the Quran, Surah Al-Mu'minun and the Surah An-Nur. Al-Mu'minun, Al-Mu'minun means believers. So what does it mean to be a believer? The entire surah answers this question. Of course, we cannot go verse by verse, but let me just bring you the conclusion of Surah Al-Mu'minun. Surah Al-Mu'minun basically tells us that to be a believer, you got to do two things. It's not one thing. It's not one thing and a half. Two things. The first is the religious observances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined upon all of us. And the surah speaks about prayer particularly, salah. This is the foremost obligation on each and every one of us. And Allah is telling us in the opening verse, of Surah Al-Mu'minun that it's not but it has to be infused with an attitude with a condition that you ought to do prayer while in a state of khushua in a state of khushua and what does khushua mean? Khushua is a combination of concentration. So you got to concentrate. You got to be aware while praying. Aware. Your mind, your heart is awake. So it's concentration. And also humility and humbleness. And also sincerity and submissiveness. Okay? So all of these words are encompassed in the Arabic beautiful word of khushua. So concentration, focus, humility, humbleness, submissiveness, sincerity. Your mind as well as your heart is awake. And that's why the scholars said that you will get nothing out of your prayer except the part that you are mindful. Okay? So you might get 10% of your prayer, or 15, or 20, or 90, or 100%. It depends on your mind and your heart is awake and concentrate okay so allah tells us that it is not just the prayer that you do it mechanically it has to be infused with khushua and also allah reminds us also in the opening verses of surah al-mu'minun that something again about prayer Something again about prayer. What is it? Allah tells us. Who, who said that? Half a sub. 
to protect the prayer. Protect the prayer. Because it can be easily lost when you just have a long meeting or a talk with your friend over the phone. You have preserved safeguard prayer because it can easily slip can easily slip. So the religious observances, that's number one. That's one leg. Okay? It's not only prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a lot of things. But what I want to share with you is the other leg or the other part of being a believer, which is mu'amala. Mu'amala. The way you deal with your fellow human beings which is even more emphasized, if you look into the surah, it's even more emphasized than the religious observances. Why? Because if we mess up with the duties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is always forgiving and, and merciful. Right? But if we mess up on the rights of fellow human beings, we are in big trouble. Really, we are in big trouble. This is what our beloved Prophet ﷺ tells us. When he was sitting among the companions, he asked them this question. And then they answered the usual answer. The bankrupt is the one who doesn't have any money or any assets or nothing. And then the Prophet ﷺ corrected this understanding by saying that the bankrupt from among my ummah is the one who is going to come on the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds, mountains of prayers, mountains of charity. But while he has this enormous good deeds, he messed up on the rights of his fellow human beings. So he... he he kept abusing, he kept stealing the uh, money of his brothers and sisters, he kept doing bad things to them. So what's going to happen in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah is going to settle the account. So what's going to happen? So some of his good deeds will be taken out from him and credited to his victims. If he ran short of settling the account, some of the victim's bad deeds will be credited to his account and eventually he will be thrown into. Is that Islam stands on two legs. The first is you do the rights of Allah and the second is you do the rights of fellow human beings. That's about Surah Al-Mu'minun. Surah Al-Nur, Al-Nur means what? Nur. Light, light. And because there is a, a, a wonderful verse in the middle of the Surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allahu Nur samawati wal He is the light of heavens and earth. And this light shines the entire universe. Particularly, Allah tells us that this light emanates in the houses of Allah, in the masajid. So we have the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remnants and rays of the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this masjid and all the masajid. So this surah talks about social ethics. And this is why Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab tells us to teach this surah particularly to our sisters. Up the social ethics of Islam. Okay? You will enjoy the light. The whole community will be full of light. Will live in light. Not in darkness. So maintaining these social ethics which are elaborated in this surah and one of them is marriage. 
which unfortunately among Muslims we are catching up to the national rates of divorce. Even in Muslim countries where I come from, it's almost almost 50% among newlyweds. It's a shocking statistic. Shocking. So we have to really go deep into our faith and see these social ethics and try to maintain these social ethics. Why? Because it is good for us and it will be also a spiritual journey for us. Maintaining and safeguarding chastity will be standing right after 8 and after 20. Please help them out. Assalamu alaikum.